Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's lecture, we'll talk about atelectasis. What is this atelectasis? It is a medical terminology. If you want to say this atelectasis lesion as uh, in layman terminology, it vaguely describes a lung without air. That means airless lung. Airless lung, airless lung is a layman terminology for medical terminology for airless lung we call it as atelectasis you can see the picture there the right lung which contains three lobes is perfectly fine it is occupying whole of the right thoracic cavity when compared to right if you see and observe the left lung it is shrunken that means there is no air in it if you take out air in the spawn how it looks it looks like that so this condition of lung diseases where there is no air in the alveolar lumen we call it as atelectasis right how to classify this atelectasis there are two type of atelectasis one i'll give you an example when a mother delivers a baby first things what everybody the neonatologist will think uh, if the baby should be uh, healthy it has to cry immediately and loudly immediately after birth why the main thing is how the how much of a baby cries loudly that amount of lung will expand properly there will be prop it is mainly used for proper expansion of the lung parenchyma if there is no expansion of the lung parenchyma that means there is no air whenever the lung expands whenever the baby cries lung will expand and air will enter into the lung parenchyma it will become normal lungs the vol it will become voluminous lungs so when there is no expansion that means incomplete expansion incomplete expansion of the lung parenchyma again it is amounts to airless lung we call it as atelectatic lung so because this is commonly seen in infants we call this as infantile atelectasis or neonatal atelectasis neonatal atelectasis And compared to this, if the airless lobe or airless lung occurs in an adult individual where the lung is already expanded, so we call it as collapse. Collapse. Because this occurs most commonly in adult individuals, we call it as adult atelectasis. Adult atelectasis. I repeat, atelectasis by definition, it is diminished volume in the lung, parenchyma. Whether it is due to incomplete expansion, when the baby is born, we call it as neonatal atelectasis because there is no air, there is no expansion of the lung parenchyma. If uh, atelectasis occurs in adults where the lung is already expanded, then we call it as adult atelectasis. Right? Both you should be very much clear let's see if you see this picture which is shown there okay in that schematic diagram the left lung is essentially unremarkable right if you see the right lung lower part of dark brownish color of the atelectatic lung that is shrunken lung airless lung so what exactly happens all of you should remember that Whenever there is an atelectasis, if you think this is an alveoli, this is a normal alveoli, when you take out the air, what happens? Alveolar wall will collapse. No air in the alveoli. But the capillary plexus which are there at the periphery, the capillary plexus which are there at the periphery will be essentially unremarkable. They are unaffected. That means blood circulation 
of the atelectatic lung will be normal. There is no impairment in the diffusion capacity or diffusion mechanism. The main problem is there is no air entry in the lung parenchyma. So these two things you should remember. Atelectasis means there is no air in the alveoli, but the capillary or blood circulation will be unaffected. That is very important. You can see those schematic uh, diagrams over there. The normal alveoli, how it looks. The air clearly enters into the alveolar parenchyma. Diffusion will be normal. Diffusion capacity will be normal. When you see the atelectatic lung, where it is collapsed, but the capillary plexus around the surface is essentially norm, un, uh, normal. So, diffusion capacity is fine because of good blood supply. Problem is, there is no air entry into this. No entry. Ultimately is, these patients will present with decreased oxygen saturation, mainly because there is no air in the alveolar lumen. So, these two things that you should remember. If there is atelectasis, how does the patient present with? That means, those are clinical features of atelectasis. Clinical features of atelectasis. Okay. If the atelectasis is affecting only small part of the lung parenchyma, small portion of the lung parenchyma, because lungs, both the lungs are very much voluminous. Even if one lung is properly functioning, it is sufficient to give a proper adequate oxygen saturation in the blood. Right. If only small part of the atelectasis of the lung occurs, it does not cause much the clinical signs and symptoms. Patient will be asymptomatic. The patient will present to the clinical OPD, pulmonary OPD only when there is severe air loss in the lung parenchyma. So, what are those? When you do not have air in the lung parenchyma, what does patient will have? They will have difficulty in breathing that we call it as dyspnea. All those clinical features are sequentially placed. When you have a dyspnea, what happens? You will have increased respiratory rate. Whenever there is increased respiratory rate, increased heart rate, tachypnea and tachycardia, right? And because of this, patient may have some kind of a chest pain. Sorry. Chest pain. He may have chest pain. If it is severely affected, patient is severely dys dysnic, the patient will have a cyanosis. He may present with cyanosis of the mucous membrane. That is, we call it a central cyanosis. Right? And when you auscultate the atelectatic portion of the lung from outside, what will have? You will not have any breath sounds, absence breath sound at the atelectatic area. So, these things you should observe. Okay? These are the clinical features, right? Then next thing is radiology. What happens if you take chest X-ray of any patient who is having atelectasis? That means airless lung. That is a picture of anterior posterior view of X-ray, chest X-ray of an atelectatic patient. What are the minimal radiological features that you see? If radiologist says that it is an atelectatic lung. So, what are those important points to say it has atelectasis? One, if we observe, there are two arrow marks there and the upper lobe is completely no air. That means, there is homogeneous gray white opacification in the upper lobe. You cannot see the upper lobe properly. That means, there is no air in the upper lobe. The sulci become more prominent. The arrow mark what you are seeing, those are sulcus they become more prominent. That means, these are the two indications. If the atelectasis airlift involves the whole one side of the lung, what will ha what all can happen? I will tell you, there is two lungs on right and left lungs. If complete one lobe is atelectasis, that means it will become very small. What all can happen? Those two representative pictures, radiological pictures, all of you can see. One. When there is no air, the automatically the other part of the lung will expand to compensate the deficient. So, there will be hyperinflation of the other lung. Hyperinflation of the other lung. It will become more prominent, more dark in color. Uh, then, uh, ribs will be widely spaced apart. On contrary, the atelectatic lung will become 
homogeneous. Whenever you see dark color, that means there is air in the lung parenchyma. When there is no air, it will become homogeneous. On left, the first picture, the left thoracic cavity is totally gray white in color. That means whole lung does not have any air. Atelectasis of left lung parenchyma. Okay. So whenever there is no air, it will become homogeneous. The dark color will go off. One. What happens? There is increased negative pressure. Negative pressure in the atelectatic side. So what happens? When there is increased negative pressure, the trachea will be shift towards the affected side. All of you should remember this. Trachea shift affected side. Okay. The trachea will be shift towards the affected side. What happens? Here compensatory hyperinflation you will have widely spaced ribs but here you will see crowding of ribs. Ribs will placed one just one below the other. So the intercostal space will be reduced. Crowding of space. Okay, this is it. then the third one important is there is absence of cardiac sillout. Sillout sign means in thoracic structures, radiologists they should able to main identify each structure, the border of each structure, lung border, heart borders, anterior, posterior, middle lateral, it can be easily made out in normal chest X-ray. When this is absent, we call it as absent sillout sign. So, because of complete air loss, homo opacific, homogeneous opacification, hyperinflation, the proper border, heart which is situated here, the heart proper border cannot be made out. So, we call it as absence or diminished cardiac sillout sign. So, in atelectasis, what are the features? Complete ear loss of the lung parenchyma, which becomes homogeneous. Crowding of ribs, opposite lung, compensatory hyperinflation, absence of cardiac sillout sign, and pushing of the trachea towards the same side. I should say pulling of the trachea towards the same time, same side because of negative thoracic pressure. All those things the important signs for the radiologist to say that it is atelectatic lung. On top of that, if you see atelectatic portion, if one portion is atelectatic here, what will happen? There is a sudden cutoff of bronchial signs. Bronchial tree, bronchiovascular markings, you can make out till the pleural surface. But because lung is collapsed here, so it will be cut off. So, cut off bronchial sign. Cut off bronchial sign or bronchial markings on radiology are again important features to say that the affected portion of the lung is airless or atelectasis, right? After seeing the radiology, let us see how can we divide or classify atelectasis. This is important for to understand atelectasis properly. There are three main type of atelectasis. It has been shown in the schematic diagram there. What are those? One, one, all of you can read. One is resorption atelectasis. Resorption atelectasis, the first one. Second one, we call it as compression atelectasis. Compression atelectasis, and the third one is contraction atelectasis. contraction atelectasis. Let us see why they have divided into three different types and what is its clinical significance. We will talk about one by one. Resorption atelectasis, right? I will put a lung parenchyma here. This is one lobe of the lung and this is the bronchi which is supplying that lobe. Major bronchi and the part of the lung which is supplied by this bronchi. Whenever there is an obstruction at the bronchi lumen at anywhere, this this part. When there is a complete obstruction, obstruction can be due to either foreign body or stricture, any neoplasm, whatever it is. If it is any lesion obstructing the lumen completely, that means there is no air entry into the lung. So, air entry is completely stopped, affected lung. So, what happens when there is no air, the air which is already there gradually gets reabsorbed into the circulation. So, slowly this will lose its volume. First here, 
then it will go down, it will go down, it will go down, it will become swell. So, ultimately, it will become complete airless portion of the lung parenchyma, which we call it as atelectasis. That's why the maximum, the pathophysiological process which is involved in the atelectasis is the resorption of air, which is already there in the lung parenchyma. We call it as resorption atelectasis. This is the pathophysiological mechanism. Let me ask you one question. If I take out this foreign body, stricture, tumor, whatever, if it is resected, if the air entry becomes patent, what will happen? The atelectatic lung gradually expand because there is no pathology here. Only whichever air is, is there which gets absorbed and it is collapsed. So, this kind of resorption atelectasis is reversible atelectasis. Okay, when you have it is reversible condition. It is reversible condition. All of you understood? Okay. Next come to the second point, compression atelectasis. The compression, the name itself ind indicates that there is something compressing on the lung parenchyma. For example, it is a lung here, trachea and you have thoracic cavity, right? Any kind of a fluid or tumor which is accumulated in the thoracic cavity, thoracic cavity, for example, either it, it can be air, if it is air we call it as pneumothorax, then blood, hemothorax, air and blood, hydropneumothorax, hydrothorax, hydropneumothorax, hydrothorax or any malignancy which is arising from the pleura or the chest wall, where all it can extend. If we want to extend, it has to extend into the thoracic cavity because there is a sponge like lung which are situated. They cannot extend upwards or outwards because it is limited by rib cage which is hard in consistency. So, whenever there is a tumor, fluid or air in the thoracic cavity, it pushes the lung or which compresses the lung now, depending on the size or volume of the fluid, it compresses the lung. So, when you compress the sponge from outside, what all the air which is present, it will be gone. So, this part of the lung parenchyma will become atelectatic. Hence, this called as compression atelectasis. I will ask you the same question, whether compression atelectasis is reversible or irreversible. If you take out the fluid which is there in the thoracic cavity, if you drain out the fluid, if you take out the air, if there is a tumor, resect the tumor, what will happen? The gradually, the atelectatic portion of the lung parenchyma will expand and compression atelectasis is also a reversible condition, right? Both resorption atelectasis, compression atelectasis, both are reversible conditions. All of you know, understood, what is the pathophysiology of these two? Third one is contraction atelectasis. This is very important. Contraction atelectasis is the only condition where it is occurring due to diffuse inflammation or contraction of the lung parenchyma. If there is a lung in chronic diffuse lung diseases where the lung undergoes complete fibrosis, fibrosis anywhere in the body, the ultimate sequela is contraction because of deposition of lot of collagen fibers. When there is diffuse lung disease, diffuse deposition of collagen, ultimately the lung will contract, the air which is there in the lung will be expelled out. So, this becomes airless lung, airless lung. This we call it as contraction atelectasis. Now, tell me, contraction atelectasis is a reversible or irreversible condition? It is irreversible condition because the whole of the lung parenchyma is involved by a chronic disease process leading into fibrosis. You cannot, it is irreversible condition. The only treatment of choice for this kind of contraction atelectasis is if it is severe involving whole of the lung parenchyma, lung transplantation is the only method of choice. So, resorption and compression atelectasis, if you identify, they are reversible conditions. If you take out the cause, every, uh, the uh, patient will become, the individual will become essentially normal. But contraction atelectasis, it is irreversible condition. Right? These are the three main important types. We saw the radiological features, we saw the clinical features, 
So, we saw the definition of atelectasis, we saw how the patient presents, radiological features and we saw the different subtypes and its pathophysiological mechanism. Now, we will see the gross morphology. If any atelectatic lung comes, how does it look? There are two pictures are shown there. The right lung which is which has three lobes is essentially normal. When compared to right lobe, left lo left lung, the upper lobe, if you see, it has become collapsed. How do you say it is collapsed? It is decreased in size. See, the upper lobe, this part of the lobe, it is decreased in slide because of no air. And when you see the surface, pleura is shiny, but there is puckering of the pleura. Puckering of the pleura, shrunken pleura, and you will see prominent rib markings. You can make out the prominent rib marking. This is an example which is taken from the book where the patient is died due to gunshot wound where there is blood in the uh, thoracic cavity causing compression. Right? This is the prominent uh, rib markings. So, this is important. In contrary, we have two more pictures. Can you tell me in the first picture which part of the lung is atelectatic? Upper lobe or lower lobe? Yes, upper lobe is fine. But when you see the lower lobe, this part of the lobe is completely shrunken, become airless, crumpled in appearance. But pleura, everything is shiny. Okay. So, this is atelectatic lung, how it looks. And contrary, they have one more picture on the other side where the whole lung is shrunken, become airless, completely just like if you crumple the tissue paper or sponge, how it looks? It looks like that. So, it is how it looks under gross examination. Okay, crumpled appearance, crumpled appearance. The normal spongy nature of the lung will be disappeared. Spongy nature is decreased. Surface is crumpled. Crumpled surface. Okay, that's how it looks under gross. If you take a proper sections from this area. Always in pathology, if you are examining any part of a disease process, we have to take the disease part and also the normal part. We have to take sections near the borders. If you take sections and examine under microscopy, how it looks? Picture is shown there. The upper part of the lung, if you see, it contains proper expanded alveoli. This is the normal alveoli, a normal lung. When you see the lower part, the alveoli are collapsed. You can still make out some kind of intraalveolar septum which is collapsed, line line things which is totally collapsed and the alveolar lumen, you can see there is small very scant space of alveolar lumen. That means there is no air, it is how it looks. So, this part is actually the atelectatic lung okay? and the upper part is the normal lung. Atelectasis means there is no air. So, what all the expanded alveoli, what you are seeing, it is collapsed. A similar picture how it looks under microscopic examination. Let us see. Atelectasis we spoke about. If we do not treat atelectasis, what can happen? That means those are called as complications. Complications of atelectasis. Okay, what all? So, one thing is when there is large portion of the lung parenchyma is involved, I told you if you recollect in my previous slides, air entry is diminished, blood the blood circulation is normal. Diffusion capacity is fine, but the proper oxygenated oxygen air is not entering into the diffusion barrier. Since when there is diffuse atelectasis, all these patients they present with improper diffusion. Improper diffusion and finally, they present with arterial hypoxemia, hypercapnia, tachycardia. So, this is sequential. Ultimately, if you do not treat, it will go for respiratory failure. And one more thing we should be important whenever there is air uh, diminished air entry, when the air is not there or air is lost, these are the areas which are more prone for secondary infections. So, secondary infection, pneumonia, secondary infections are more common on the atelectatic segment. Out of three different types of atelectasis, compression atelectasis and resorption atelectasis are reversible and if it is 
contraction atelectasis, the only uh, treatment of choice is lung transplantations. Right? So, we will finish about atelectasis in lung transplantation. So, in today's class, I repeat, we spoke about atelectasis, that means airless lung. We spoke about the definition, different subtypes of atelectasis like neonatal atelectasis or adult atelectasis and we also learned about what are the clinical features, what are the radiological features of atelectasis, how it looks under gross my, uh, macroscopic examination, microscopic examination, what are the three different subtypes of atelectasis whether it is reversibility and non-reversibility and their pathophysiological process and we saw the complications of atelectasis. Right. In next class, we will talk about pulmonary edema. Thank you.